Okay, welcome back everybody from the coffee session. I hope you're all feeling refreshed. So we're very pleased to have Professor Fang Fang here as the next speaker. He's the Executive Associate Director of the IDG McGovern Institute for Brain Research at Peking University. He's also a Professor of Psychology and Dean of the School of Psychological and Cognitive Sciences and Director of Beijing Key Laboratory of Behavior and Mental Health. He obtained his PhD and did postdoctoral work in brain and cognitive sciences with Zheng He, Daniel Kirsten, and Gordon Legg. His research seeks to understand the neural mechanisms of visual and cognitive processing by combining neuroimaging, visual, um, and uh, brain stimulation, psychophysics, and computational modeling. I found out that one of his heroes is MIT's David Marr, a hero of many. And he would like to understand visual recognition well enough to duplicate this in AI, something that his work has taken great strides towards um, across the visual of, uh, arena of visual recognition. His title is IDG McGovern Institute at Peking University, Past, Present, and Future. So thank you, very pleased to be here. So I show this building here is, is uh, the highest building at Peking University, which the McGovern Institute for Brain Research at Peking University is located in, the, in this building. But the institute will move to the new building I will show later. So we get together here to commemorate Mr. Patrick McGovern. So Patrick, McGovern, he was not only a su successful business leader, but also a visionary support of brain research. Together with his wife, Laura, he established the IDG McGovern Institute for Brain Research at Peking University. The McGovern's have interacted with Peking University at many levels, from the university leadership to students, on occasions ranging from board meetings to a scientific symposium. So our faculty members and students treasure the inspiration, wisdom, and generosity of Patrick McGovern. So the first part is uh, talking about ours. So the institute at Peking University was et established in 2012. That's seven years ago. So with a contribution from Pat and Laura so who are committed to improving human welfare, communication, and understanding through their support for neuroscience. So I show the picture here, is that's uh, 2012. So our president, our EX, EX, EX president, uh, Joe Chifun signed a contract with uh, Patrick and uh, Laura, uh, just in the Weiming Lake. So at that time, so Yi Rao and uh, show up in this picture. So the institute currently have 26 neuroscientists and cognitive scientists from many areas such as biology, cognitive science, psychology, chemistry, physics, and computer science, and psychiatry. So we aim to understanding the normal brain functions and brain disorders. So we use various techniques from traditional psychophysics, genetics, to uh, modern imaging and the manipulation of molecule and neuron, visualization and the functioning hu uh, human brains, genomic an analysis of diseases and uh, cognitive traits. So I show the border meetings. So immediately follow President Zhou Qifeng, so the university president was uh, Professor Wang Enge. That's in the first two pictures. Then the next president is Professor Lin Jianhua. Uh, he's a chemist. And uh, Professor Lin Jianhua stepped down last fall. So hopefully in the coming May, so the board meet meeting will invite our new president, Hao Ping, will show up in the meetings. Uh, 
so I bring this picture here that happened in 2014, August 20th. So the institute at Peking U University held a memorial ceremony in memory of Patrick at Peking University. So people, on that day, people gathered in front of the site of new building, which was just groundbroken and the final location of the institute. At the ceremony, a tall and street Chinese scholar tree in front of the oncoming building was named after Patrick McGovern, in indicating that Patrick's spirit remained evergreen with us. So the members of institute are confident that we will make important contributions and discoveries in brain research. So I showed them, and then that's five years later. So we took the picture a few days ago. That's a new building for the McGovern Institute. Uh, the total space is almost 10,000 square meters. So the McGovern uh, Institute will occupy the third and the fourth floors, of course, including the underground basement uh, animal facilities. So the space will be over 4,000 square meters. Here's some uh, internal pictures that I show the student office and the experimental uh, areas, and also the, 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 the room, the space for discussion and uh, for communications. The second part, I show the faculty and activities. So now we have uh, 26, and this morning we have one more new PI join. Our institute, that's we, right now we have 27 faculty members. So that's uh, nine people from uh, School of and Cognitive uh, Sciences. That's myself, I study visual perception, attention, and awareness. And Chong Yu study visual psychophysics. Hang Zhang study perception and action, decision making. And Huan Lu also show up here. So she study attention, working memory, neural oscillation. Lu Xiaju uh, studied uh, neural economics. And Shen Li studied visual cognition. And we also have two more people, Shi Hui Han and Xiaoling Zhou study social neuroscience. And uh, a Japanese scientist, Yuji Naya, uh, uh, doing a declarative memory. So we also have seven people from uh, School of Life Sciences. That's uh, Donggeng Luo, study uh, sensory neurobiology. Jia Ning Yu, study neural circuits, uh, movements, and the somatic sensation. Jing Yang, uh, neural mechanism of neurodegenerative disorders. Shi Ming Tang, study the uh, using the two frontal imaging to study the monkey vision. And Yan Zhang study the cell death mechanism in neurodegenerative diseases. Now Yi Zhao, for some reason, uh, he didn't got the visa. Um, but uh, uh, his research interesting is very broad, including all areas in neurobiology and genetics. Uh, Yu Longli, uh, he studied uh, sensory neurobiology and uh, neuronal imaging. And we also have a faculty member from physics. Uh, he used uh, MRI to study uh, human brain. And that's Health Science Center of PQ. That actually is a medical school. Uh, Dai Zhang studied the uh, uh, neurobiology of mental uh, illness, uh, mechanism of illness, especially focused on the autism. And Jia Li Li, uh, he also is here in this room. He studied epigenetic. Uh, basis in the biology of brain aging and age-related related diseases. Ling Lu studied the uh, mental illness, and Wei Hua Yue also studied the uh, genetic susceptibility of mental illness. And Yong Zhang studied uh, the synaptic plasticity and the learning and the memory. And Wang Yun, he uh, studied the uh, nervous system signal transduction. And uh, we have a uh, uh, one faculty member from the Institute of Molecular Medicine, that's a Georgia study neurobiology. And one professor from chemistry study the chemistry enabled tools for neuroscience. And one more person studied the computational neuroscience. 
and the brain-inspired computation. So we have every year we have many activities. For example, I show here it's a fifth APRU symposium on brain and mind research in the Asian Pacific areas. So we invite people from countries surrounding the Pacific Ocean, and uh, that's happened in 2014. And uh, this uh, joint symposium with uh, several McGovern, that's 2015. It's a symposium on synapse and uh, brains. And uh, in the summer, 2016 summer, we have International Chronobiology Summer School. And every year, we recruit, re -recruit uh, top uh, undergraduate students from uh, university across China to attend the Neural and the Cognitive Science Summer School. So every year, about 120 undergraduate students uh, join the summer school and uh, interact with our faculty members. And that's the last year we have uh, uh, neuroscience and artificial intelligence. We are doing meet that's interdisciplinary workshop. That's happened on July 2nd. Um, so the aim of this workshop is to discuss the most recent developments in neuroscience and the possible implication in developing uh, brain-inspired machine learning algorithm and AI. So more than 20 experts throughout the world uh, give a lectures and uh, in this simple workshop. The third part is about the research. Um, so I briefly talk about the, what happened in the lab uh, in our institute. So very recently, that's the last month, so EROS lab proposed a concept of the Camo uh, connectome as the entirety of all neurotransmitters, neuromodulators, and neuropeptides and the receptors, and the approach of uh, chemo connectomics to trace neural circuits anatomically and uh, functionally. And then in Yulong's lab, so the research at of Yulong's lab focuses on the synaptic transition between neurons, the complex intera interaction between the neuron as well as their functional modulation by distinct modul modulators call for new technology and could potentially enable new finding. So Yulong in last year, that's the development of novel genetic encoded fluorescent sensor for imaging neurotransmitters was selected as 2018's top 10 advances in life science China by China, Chinese, by Chinese Union of life science societies. So, uh, so I show the, the two studies. So in recent years, the so Yulong's lab focused on de developing novel genetic in encoded fluorescent sensors that could sensitively monitor the dynamics of specific neurotransmitters. So including acetylcholine, dopamine, norepinephrine, um, that this GPCR activation-based sensors, so-called GRAB sensors, are engineered by tapping into the natural involved neurotransmitter receptors, GPCRs, and converted the uh, ligand-induced activation to the fluorescent changes. The sensor of sensitivity has such sensitivity, fast response kinetics, and the superior specificity, which can enable us to track the new endogenous dynamics of specific neurotransmitters in distinctive behavior across multiple animal led, uh, models like fruit, fly, fish, mice, and even non-human primates. So the Ximing Tang developed a two photon image on a weak uh, macaque. Uh, they can imagine thousands of uh, neurons in a weak neuron. So that offer a possible way to look deep into the, uh, the neural basis of visual cognition. So that's, uh, he also uses technique to uh, find V1 neuron actually can uh, selective for many complex patterns. Also, he reveals some uh, sparse coding mechanism for V1 neurons. So Ian John's lab, uh, he studied the Alzheimer's diseases. 
So he, she investigated the role of tracing in axons, guidance, and neuronal network formations. So they found that Drexin promotes the clustering of neurons and axon guidance interacting with collateral cancer. So this data provide excellent example of high guidance receptors, receptors interaction and therefore has great impact on axon guidance. So Dongen's lab, his work mainly focuses on the mapping the connectome uh, from a photo entrainment in Drosophila. That's a new discovery. Uh, his new discovery is hub organized parallel circuits. Um, that's Dongen's study. And in the School of the Cognitive Sciences, so Professor Xiaoling Zhou, nah, uh, he has three research lines. So one is the social neuroscience and the social economics, which are related to the social cognition social emotion and the social decision making. And he is also interested in the language processing, including visual and spoken language comprehension and the development of reading ability in normal and dyslexia children. So recent work focuses on the neural pragmatics. So the Juan Luo's lab, uh, he's uh, used EEG and MEG to st investigate the temporal dynamics in attention and the working memory in humans. They are particularly interested in knowing how multiple objects, as well as their older relationship, are maintained and represented in the attention and the working memory. So in a recent work publishing in eLife, her group found that sequentially memorized items are serious and reactivate during memory retention, and surprisingly, in a temporarily compressed and backward manner. So this fast and backward reply profile is further found to be closely associated with the recency effect in sequence memory behavior. So this also some uh, other MEG stu study and uh, uh, visual attention study and uh, the feature integration study. And uh, Lucia's lab, uh, his, uh, uh, his study is how the uh, how the stimulus during the sleep can affect the social decision. Uh, it's very um, interesting that published in the eLife. And uh, Lucia also has a, a paper in the Nature Communication show the function of the basal ganglion in the social decision making. So the damage to the basal, uh, basal ganglion will affect the decision, uh, will induce the decision making uh, uh, deficits, deficits, especially in the social behavior. So finally, in my lab, so we, I study, I use uh, 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 brain imaging and TMS to study the saliency map and the pri priority map in the visual cortex. So we identify the saliency map in the V1 and the priority map in the extra stride view area, that's V2 and the V3. Uh, I also study the perceptual learning, so I show the Perceptual learning can modify the functional specialization of visual cortical area, rather than just simply enhance the function. So it's in my lab, it's the first time to find perceptual learning of contrast detection in human LGN. Uh, we, we identify the M layers in LGN are responsible for, con for contrast learning. So two more slides for the future. So. Um, in the coming May, so the China Brain Project will start. So I show the framework of China Brain Project. So we call the one body, two wings. So the, f the body is understand the neural basis of cognitive functions and the develop of the brain research technology pro uh, platform. The two wings is on, on one side is the develop effective approaches in early diagnosis and intervention of brain disorders. So the other wing is develop a brain machine intelligence technologies. Um, that's the one body, two wing plan. So in this uh, brain project, China brain project, the McGovern Institute at Peking University will play a major and even essential role in this project. A key component in this brain project is the Chinese Institute for Brain Research. 
uh, was established last year. So Yi Rao is the co-director of this uh, institute. Um, uh, so I show some picture for the uh, for the ceremony uh, for the for the establishment ceremony ceremony. So, okay, that's my uh, brief introduction of the our institute at Peking U University. So thank you for your attention. We have time for some questions. Any questions from the audience? Do you have any, does the Institute have any formal relationship with sort of the computer AI machine learning part of Peking University? How close is that relationship? Yeah, that's the next week. So we'll, the Peking University will establish a uh, a school or an institute of AI. Okay, that uh, this will be announced next next week. So I'm affiliated to that school, and uh, Professor Su, he is also a PI of our institute. He is also an official member of that school. Yeah. Any other questions after that breaking news? I was wondering if you can dis uh, you know yet how the Government Institute of PKU will specifically benefit from this n the new China Brain Initiative. I mean, how is that going to work? Will will the Brain Initiative be funding research within PKU? How how will that work? Uh, there will be many uh, uh, grant application material, so we apply the grant. There will also some special program to support young scientists, uh, which means. Uh, Ages below 45 years old, and uh, recently last year, the university also gave us 15 new PI positions, so we can recruit uh, 15 new PIs and also 20 co-PIs. That's a lot of new positions. Okay, and I had a question about the chemoconnectomics, which is a very grand vision. Wow. Is, yeah. Is this um, something that multiple labs are participating in at Peking University? That's, I mean, I mm -hmm. don't know much about this, but okay. that's e work. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. And Thank you. Look